Everybody, welcome to the uh, second video in the series about the theory of special relativity. I will be talking about the phenomena of length contraction. In this video, we will be proving and deriving two things. The first is this equation. It shows how much the length of an object shrinks that is located in a moving frame of reference, in which uh, L sub O is the observed length and L is the actual or own length. The other thing we will derive is a formula to convert the distance to an event in one frame of reference to the distance to that same event in another moving frame of reference and vice versa. To be able to follow along with all the material, be sure to watch the prior knowledge and assumptions in the first video. There should be a link in the top of this video right now. A list of all the standards used in this video. First off, relative speed is 0.6 c. The distance of one light second equals 2000 pixels. And all distances are displayed correctly only in relation to the stationary frame of reference. The stationary frame of reference is indicated by either the letter S, displayed in the bottom left corner, standing for the Earth's frame of reference, or the notation S prime, standing for the spaceship's frame of reference. Next, when talking about the frame of reference of the spaceship, I will add a prime sign to all quantities. For instance, T prime for the spaceship's elapsed time. And last but not least, all animations are displayed at half speed. For the disclaimer, all length contractions mentioned in this video are only applicable to lengths parallel to the velocity factor. In other words, distances only shrink along the path of movement and not perpendicular to it. Second, speeds and travel distances are to scale. Three, however, the size of the animated objects are not. Let's derive the equation for length contraction. We'll start off with the following animation. So we have the planet Earth on the left side and a satellite to the right at the distance of 0.6 light seconds. The Earth and satellite are in the same frame of reference, so they're not moving in relation to one another. First of all, we want to add a clock on the satellite that runs equal to the Earth's clock. Now let's have the spaceship fly by at 0.6c and see how long it takes between the two following events. First, the event of the spaceship crossing the center of the Earth, and second, the event of the spaceship hitting the satellite. So according to us on Earth and in the satellite, this process will take one second. Now since the relative speed of the spaceship is 0.6c, the distance between the Earth and satellite must be 0.6 light seconds. That's from our perspective. If we consider this algebraically, we can say that the speed v equals distance traveled divided by the time that it is taken. This should be 0.6c. Rewrite the equation to get the distance traveled. In other words, multiply speed 0.6c by the elapsed time 1 second will yield 0.6 light seconds. However, the spaceship itself only counts 0.8 seconds over that same space. We derived this number in the previous video, the one on uh, time dilation. Now, since the relative speed is 0.6 c to an Earth observer, as well as to a spaceship observer, something must be happening to the distance traveled according to the spaceship. Let's calculate this ds prime or distance traveled according to the spaceship the same way. So again, multiply speed 0.6c by 0.8 seconds. This yields 0.48 light seconds. So the distance traveled according to the spaceship is shrunk by the same factor as the speed of its clock and turns out to be 0.48 light seconds, hence this formula. This is the simplest way to show how lengths contract when looking at one or more moving objects. Let us look at an example. Assume we have a spaceship, like the SpaceX Starship, with a length of 120 meters. This is the length that we would measure when we are stationary in relation to the spaceship. But 
what length would we measure if it passed us by at 0.6c? To find that out, we can use this equation. So, LO equals L multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. We want to find LO, or the length of the spaceship, according to an observer. If we fill in the right, 120 meters multiplied by the square root of 1 minus 0.6c squared over c squared, or 0.6 squared. That works out to be 0.36, or simplified, the square root of 0.64, which then is 120 meters multiplied by 0.8, which equals 96 meters. So that will be the length that we, as an earthly observer, measure the starship's length to be. Continue watching this video to find the more generic way of how distances and space contract in one frame of reference versus the other. Okay, let's start the derivation of the second objective. I'll be using the same animation as a basis, so the spaceship flying by the Earth. But this time there will be two extra events. The first event is triggered when the spaceship passes by the center of the Earth. The triggered event is a blue photon shooting out from the center of the Earth towards the right. The second event is the photon colliding with the little white panel on the satellite, just left of the further solar array. We will be considering these two events from both frames of reference. Let's now take the same flow of events, but this time from the perspective of the spaceship. This time the Earth and satellite will fly towards the left of the spaceship at 0.6c. Once the tips of the fuel tanks coincide with the center of the Earth, the first event is triggered. Now based on our first assumption, the photon will shoot out at a relative speed c in re relation to us in the spaceship towards the right. At the same time, however, the satellite will approach the spaceship at the same relative speed of 0.6 c. Thus, the closure speed of the photon and the satellite will be those speeds added together. Remember, this still satisfies our first assumption since the speed of light remains c and the speed of the spaceship remains v. It is important to note that this is only from the current perspective. This is part of the reason why our second event takes place quicker from this perspective than the Earth's perspective. I'm going to show the animation again, so the Earth flies by the spaceship at 0.6c. Event 1 is triggered, and the photon shoots out towards the right. After a short period of time, the second event takes place as the photon hits the satellite's white panel. But let's for a second consider the current distance between the Earth and the satellite. The space between them seems the same now as from the perspective of an Earth observer. Think about the conclusion that we drew during the previous animation though. The space between the two events should have shrunk by that factor, in this case 0.8. In other words, this animation is not completely correct. Same situation, but now we will take a minute to get the space and distances correct as perceived uh, by the spaceship. First of all, we concluded that the distances between the two events had shrunk by a certain factor. But what would if we take another random space, like the Earth, and consider this distance? We should draw the same conclusion. And through the same reasoning, we will conclude that this distance should also shrink by the same amount. Apply that theory to the satellite, and we will yet again end up with the same conclusion. In other words, this is what it will look like when we apply that principle to all distances in the other frame of reference. Playing the animation again, we realize that the photon will reach the satellite even quicker than we thought from the previous animation. The time the photon took to reach the second event, we will call T prime. And that makes its travel distance, according to the spaceship, C multiplied by T prime. Going back to the Earth's frame of reference, we realize that from that perspective, all distances should shrink as well. 
but now the distances only shrink when looking at the other moving frame of reference, in this case, the spaceship. So in actual fact, observing from the Earth, things will look like this. When the animation is played, we see that, considering these two events, not much has changed, and the time the photon has traveled is equal to t, and the distance is equal to c multiplied by t. It is, however, important to realize that the length of the spaceship seems a factor of 0.8 smaller as viewed from the Earth. Now let's shrink this picture and put the spaceship's perspective in the other corner. We will walk through all the event locations in both frames of reference separately. First off, let's take a look at the spaceship's perspective on the left. We have the Earth's reference point. Then there is the location of the first event and the spaceship's reference point. This is the point from which we measure all distances for the spaceship's frame of reference and the location of the second event. Moving over to the Earth, there's the first event's location and also the Earth's reference point. Then we have the spaceship's reference point and the location of the second event. Next we will quantify all distances between the mentioned points. Starting on the right, there's the distance between the Earth and spaceship from the Earth's perspective. This equals the spaceship's speed v multiplied by time t. We could use v equals 0.6 c, but I'd like to keep it as generic as possible. Then there is the distance at which the second event takes place. We will call this x. Moving over to the left, we have the distance to the second event according to the spaceship. We will call this x prime. And finally, there's the distance between the spaceship's reference point and the Earth. From this perspective, that distance equals v multiplied by t prime. We now need to find a relationship between the x and x prime. Now, if we consider the left perspective, and if we would add v multiplied by t prime and x prime together, we will find the distance from the Earth that the second event takes place. But we also learned that this distance has shrunk in comparison to the Earth's perspective. So in order to find x, which is a distance from the Earth's perspective, we will need to add v multiplied by t prime together with x prime and multiply that result by a factor which is as of yet unknown to us. And we will call that factor gamma. We will apply the same reasoning to the right picture where we want to find x prime. First of all, take x and subtract from that distance v multiplied by t. It appears we have found x prime, but we cannot forget the fact that all distances have shrunk this way around as well, since we are still talking about the same situation from two different perspectives. All scaling factors should be equal to both frames of reference. So, we also have to multiply the value x minus vt by that same factor, gamma. We now combine both terms to find the value of gamma. To do that, we multiply the left side of both equations and the right side. So, multiply left and multiply right gets us this. Don't forget to square the gamma on the right side. Now get rid of one pair of brackets by multiplying the contents of the left brackets by the rights. So multiply x prime by x, x prime by minus vt, vt prime by x, and vt prime by minus vt. Now we will do a substitution. Remember how we spoke about the event happening at a distance c multiplied by t from the Earth and c multiplied by t prime from the spaceship? In this example, we called those x and x prime respectively. Now we will substitute x for ct and x prime for ct prime just in the second and third terms to get this following line. The second and third terms cancel each other out and we are left with this. Now we will substitute all x's by ct's according to the previous example. And after doing that, we simplify. 
we are now left with an equation that has the term t multiplied by t prime in both sides. So to simplify even further, let's divide left and right by t multiplied by t prime. Move the brackets to the other side and let's switch the equation around to get gamma in front of the equal sign. Divide the numerator and denominator on the right side by c squared to simplify the fraction. Then take the square root from both sides to find a very familiar equation. So again, this is a purely algebraic way to prove what the scaling factor of space is. This time, without even using the properties and geometry of a light clock. There are two things you might be wondering right now. So one, why did we use a light particle to link the first and second event? And could something slower also have worked? Well, the answer is yes, something slower would have worked too. But in order for it to work, we need to be able to properly add and subtract speeds of this magnitude, which will be explained later. For now, we have used speed c because of our first assumption tells us how to add and subtract it. The second thing you might be wondering is uh, how can we consider the space that we called x prime as a distance in the frame of reference of the spaceship, even though the second event is actually a photon hitting an object in the Earth's frame of reference, so a different one. Well, consider the definition of an event. The event in this case is a collision which is registered by an observer in any frame of reference. This means that we can consider the distance between the spaceship and the second event from two different frames of reference. In the next video it will become clear why that piece of space behaves the same way as for instance the length of the spaceship itself. Let's find out if these equations actually work. To do that we first want to calculate the time it takes between event 1 and event 2 according to the spaceship. So the animation will play until event 1 occurs and the perspective will be that of the spaceship. Now for a second let's think about the distance that the photon needs to travel according to us and the speed at which the photon approaches its endpoint. So this space is 0.48 light seconds as we have found earlier. Now for the closure speed we know that the photon is moving away from us to the right at speed c and we know that the satellite is moving towards the left at 0.6 c. Because both speeds are relative to us, we can conclude that their closure speed, or v sub c, is equal to 1 c plus 0.6 c, which equals 1.6 c. Consulting a previously used formula to find the elapsed time for the spaceship, dt prime equals ds prime over v sub c, which is 0.48 light seconds over 1.6 c, that equals 0.3 seconds. This means that it takes 0.3 seconds for the second event to occur after the first is triggered, again according to the spaceship. In other words, the spaceship's time t prime will show 0.3 seconds at the time of the second event. Let's go back to this setup with the equations that contain the gamma factor. If we fill in all the data we found earlier in the video, all distances should match. Let's do that. Looking at the right picture, x should be 0.6 light seconds. We'll find this by filling in our data in the right side. We know that gamma is 1.25 based on the speed of 0.6 c. We also know that x prime can be written as c t prime, the distance that the blue photon has traveled for the time t prime. Add to that the speed at which the Earth moved to the left, multiplied by the time it took for event 2 to happen, or 0.6 c multiplied by 0.3 seconds. Add those together, to get 1.25 multiplied by 0.48, resulting in, as we kind of hoped, 0.6 light seconds. Now over to the right side. Let's find x prime using our equation. So filling gamma being 1.25, the value x, 0.6 light seconds, and vt, 
which is speed 0.6c multiplied by time 0.6 seconds. Work that out gets us 1.25 multiplied by 0.24 light seconds. That equals 0.3 light seconds. Now consider the time it took for event 2 to happen. Then consider the distance a light particle travels in that time frame. We can conclude that both formulas work flawlessly. To wrap up, let's take a look at the formulas we have come up with and see how they are related and more importantly how to put them to use. So first of all this formula and based on what we found gamma to be towards the end of this video which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared we can rewrite this formula to LO equals L over gamma and to refresh LO stands for the length measured by an observer while L stands for the length that someone would measure if they were stationary in relation to the measured object. Use this formula to find the length of a fixed object, for example a spaceship, or a fixed distance, e.g. between the Earth and the satellite. Since gamma is always greater than 1, the perceived length will always be smaller than the actual length. The next two equations apply when calculating the distance to a certain event and transforming it from one frame of reference to the other. And one last point on these, because a question that could arise might be, well if all situations are symmetrical and can be viewed equally from either frame of reference, why is there a plus vt prime in one formula and a minus vt in the other one? Why aren't they both pluses or both minuses? Well the answer to that is we have to define a positive direction for velocity v and distance x and that has to be the same direction and since we chose that to be to the right it means we have to add vt prime instead of subtracting it to convert x prime into x we could also have chosen v to be a plus value from the perspective of the earth and a negative value from the perspective of the spaceship and both options will eventually yield the same results in the formulas.